today I will come in as a doctor. If you have malaria, a doctor will give you paracetamol, um, lunat. But if you have an injury like gangrene, they will cut your leg to save your life. Today I will be touching very sensitive buttons that will tamper with the way you think. Because we cannot continue to think in this mentomic, mundane, moribund, myopic way. And I came here because I want you to change that mindset. There is no difference between the people that are sitting in front and the people that are sitting at the back. There's no difference. It is a decision. The same way you can stand up from there and come and sit here is the same way you can become whoever. It is not your local government that is punishing you. It is the decision you have made. If you can change your decisions, you will change your address. Now, I'll tell you a story about this young girl. She finished from the university. Five years, she couldn't get a job. And for five years, she had gone to everywhere, applied, she couldn't get a job. Now, she met somebody, and somebody said, look, there is a native doctor we can take you to. If we take you to that native doctor, that native doctor can tell you your future. So they went to this native doctor, and this native doctor said something. He said that I have two calabashes, one with white chalk, one with black chalk. Now, there is a millipede I'll remove. If the millipede enters into the circle with the black chalk, know that your future is bad. But if it enters into the circle with the white chalk, know your future is good. So they started playing the drums, and the millipede began to move. And the millipede was moving into the circle with the white chalk. Everybody was happy. Just at the edge of entering into the circle with the white chalk, the millipede changed his mind and started moving towards the circle with the black chalk. Everybody thought maybe it was the music, and then they stopped the music. The millipede did not stop. The millipede was just about to enter into the circle with the black chalk. The girl stood up, went to the millipede, caught the millipede with her hand, put it in the circle with the white chalk, and killed it. Then they asked the woman, why did she do that? She said she cannot be alive and see her future go bad. The best way for you to determine your own future, my brothers, is for you to create it. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody. It is a decision away. Life is about making impact, not about statistics. And I will touch some buttons here. There is said, there's a statement that says there's no smoke without fire. How many of you know that? Whenever you see smoke, know there's fire. Everywhere that you see smoke, the fire does not kill. The fire only burns. But the smoke is what kills. In Nigeria today, you have sea robbery, illegal bunkering, all terrorism, internet fraud, pipeline ban, kidnap and ransom, all the cultism in school. Everything you see here, everything is smoke. Everything. Now, what does smoke mean? If this is the smoke, Ubon, where is the fire? I'll touch you. Now, every time we have political disruptions, when elections come, and I thank God for credible people that are holding a quiet bomb old, but when election comes, politicians try to rally around you, and they give you 2,000 naira. Well, after 2,000 naira, they will now say four years later, they'll give you another 2,000 naira. Now, what it means is that every year, your value is only 500 naira. Now, in 500 naira, then in one month, your value is 41 naira, 67 kobo. And in one day, your value is 1 naira, 39 kobo. When you allow somebody to determine your fate because of the money you collect, you have no reason to talk. So if they call us Niger Delta Avengers, they call us political thugs, it is because we have sold our birthright. The strongest societies we have, and not the one that has all the things, that people that respect each other. Let me take you to a society. This is my mentor. His name is Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He is the president of, U of Dubai, the vice president of UAE. He put a tweet out by, on the 19th of October 2017 that we want to change ministers. And on that tweet by 5 p.m., he appointed a friend of mine called Oman Bil Sultan Al Olama, 27 year old boy to become the Minister of Artificial Intelligence. What was he supposed to do? He was planning how Dubanians will live in planet Mars in the year 2117, 100 years time. They were not thinking of the next election. They were thinking of the next generation. I came here because I have to start talking to my brothers that our next generation is important. 
It is not for you to sit at the back and shout. It doesn't move me. I'm interested in you becoming better today to protect my children that are coming tomorrow. He said women constitute 50% of the society. When we ignore women, we ignore 50% of our potential. Dubai launched two, last year, they call it the Khalifa Sat. And they built the first satellite that was sent up to their own space. All the engineers there were 23 years old to 27. The president is the one in the center. All them were locals. Ibesikwa Sultan youth can do things. You have the capacity to do. It is a decision that we need to take. It is either we win or we win. I don't believe in losing. Yes, you have to win. But these people are thinking like that. What are Ibesikwa Sultan people doing? On the news yesterday, they said that a man in this local government was arrested, 47-year-old man, for raping his, his two daughters in this local government. In Lagos, a 47-year-old man was also arrested. We are not thinking of the future. We are thinking of how to violate our children. No, 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 no. That has to stop. Young people are building things. We need to start thinking. They even have positions for women. And those ones are going far. Let me touch some buttons here. Jack Ma, the richest man in China, richest man in China, say, tell your children that the battle is not with themselves. Technology is your competition. It is not for you to come and shout at me. Technology has taken over. 800 million jobs will be taken from the system. You are shouting that there are no jobs. There will be more no jobs because technology has taken over. Every job you have now, my phone can do the work of 10 men. 10 men. My phone. I don't need people because my phone can do the work. So if that is the case, now tomorrow when you go and apply for a job, a machine will take over that one. You go and apply for work now, they say we don't need human beings because a robot can do the work of 10 men. We need to get hungry and change the way we think because everybody now will get hungry. We'll get hungry and start eating ourselves. I come from a beautiful state, Akwaibom. I am proud to be called an Akwaibomite. I am a proud son of, of Ibex Kwa Sutan. Akwaibom State is rich with 31 local governments, 119 clans, 2,664 villages. I know my statistics well. Created in 1987, we are 5 million in this, in this state. 10 million of us are outside in diaspora. We are bordered to the north by Abia State, to the west by Cross River, to the east by River State, and to the south by the Gulf of Guinea. 13.4% of Nigeria's length of um, coastline is Aquaibom State. And guess what? At a certain point, we had so much money in this state. And guess what? what? In 2006, the population was 3.9 million. By 2015, we had increased to 5.2. In nine years, our population had increased by 35%. How much more has it happened? And guess what? 64% of the entire population of this Aquaibom State are youth under 45. And then we are looking for how to produce, how to produce opportunities for them. And guess what it is? If we check the civil service, which you are, you have 17,223 jobs only. And then how many real jobs do we have? AdMobile had all the core companies. You have only 40,000. Put them together. There are only 60,000 on a population of 5.2. It is not because there is a new governor. We've had the problem a long time. It is poor thinking. We need to change it. And I dare say, that is why you have anarchy. You have prostitution. You have our girls going wild. You have boys vandalizing. Boys joining secret club. Our academics is shambles. Okada every single way because we have not been able to put ourselves to, to work. It is about time that we wake up. And I dare say that the problem with Nigeria, the problem with Africa, the problem with Akwaibom, the problem with Ibesqua Sutan is free food. Free food. A young man will wake up in his house. My brother, my senior brother is here. will give that boy that's 25 years old, 30 years old, food to eat in his house. He will eat breakfast and he will swallow it. He will eat maybe um, yam with, with beans and then bread. He doesn't know what to do to make sure there's food. Then, in, in, then by 11 o'clock, he's watching Telemundo, watching Ziwa, watching Okon Calabar in the, eve, in the afternoon. Four wraps of pounded yam with a goosey soap. He will push the meat or swallow. He will take tea, take everything, sleep. By 4 p.m., he's watching us now, watching Man U, watching West Ham, watching Chelsea. He knows everything about championship, knows everything about La Liga, but does not know anything about his complete life. The 
and by 6 p.m. he's eating his sister's food. He doesn't know what is happening at that point in time. I am tired of this kind of nonsense. I am tired. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. By 8 p.m. you are seeing the boy taking two bottles of uh, stout with, with palm wine and then you chop dog meat. He knows where they sell the best dog meat in this town. He knows where they sell, sell the next best dog meat in this town. After he will do it, he'll be there one month, two months, one year, two years, three years, four years. After four years, he'll go to church. He said, Pastor, pray, there's a witch in my village. There's a witch in my village. I came to expose that witch for you. Your father and mother that give you free food. When they give you free food, they stop you from thinking. When they stop you from thinking, they stop you from productivity. Enough is enough. After I come and be discussing politics, APC, PDP in your house. Look at your neighbor and say, never again. Look at him and say, never again. Everything changes today. What rubbish. Hunger is the gift of God to man. Hunger is the gift of God to man. Let me tell you, unless you are hungry, you will not look for food. Unless you are hungry, you will not look for food. When somebody gives you free food, they stop you from thinking. When you go and disturb somebody here for 2,000 naira, you can't think again. You need the hunger to activate your creativity. You need it to boost the way you think. The difference between a vulture and an eagle is appetite. A vulture does not eat food that it kills. It waits for the food to be sick, to be weak, and to die. But an eagle will, wait, will kill its own. If you have to wake up every morning and go and wait at the chairman's house by 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. for him to give you money, you are suffering from a vulture mentality. I came here to shake the house. I came here to scatter. I came here to dominate. Somebody say go. There's more to, to say and I quote. He said, when missionaries came to Africa, we had the land and they had the Bible. Then they said, let us pray. So we closed our eyes. By the time we opened it, they had taken the land and then they gave us the Bible. There is a church on every street here. No productivity. No productivity. Everywhere you see there's a problem in this state, there's an opportunity to start a business. If there is a problem with the road, start a business on, on the road. If there's a problem, start a business. If there's a problem with water, start a water company. If there's a problem with construction, start one. If there's a problem with light, start one. If there's a problem with security, start one. I started my security company here in Aquabon State. I started it here. I didn't start it in Lagos. I slept on the floor. I knew Aquabon not by Gogomo, by leg map. I know this way very well. Don't look at me that I'm wearing blue suit or, or suit like that. I started from the ground. I know my way. I know my way. Whenever you see this story on anybody, ask them who they are. I'm not moved by what you drive. I'm not interested in what you have. Drive a G-Wagon, I care less. Drive a Rolls Royce, I care less. Tell me how you got it. That's what I want to know. If you don't have a story for me, your glory is fake. Your glory is fake. Stop getting fascinated by people that drive big cars. You don't need it. Get excited about people that have a story. Anybody, any car that somebody drives is old model to the one you will drive. This is my story. I was born in 1972. First of nine children. I'm from Aquaibon State, proudly Nigerian. Graduated from Federal Government College, Lagos, University of Calabar. And guess what? I became an alumnus of the Lagos Business School and a security. I've been in security for 25 years. And I've risen to the rank that some of you, you do not know about. Those ranks are really, really interesting. Next slide. But a lot of people do not know that when I was 39 years old, my father was poisoned and killed in this same local government. Because of that, I left this local government. I didn't want to come back here. Yes, hold on. Stay there with me. It pained me. It cost me a lot of pain that somebody that I looked at, everybody that I called uncle walked away from me. Nobody was there to assist me. 
I was in secondary school year two. And because of that, it affected my, my, my academics. I was not good in English. So I came out of, of, of secondary school with a P in English. In 1989, I was admitted into the University of Benin. Because of English, I was dropped. 1990, I went to last. 1991, I got into Unibel, Unical. Unical accepted me to study agri-economics. But because of English, they called me. They said I should do education agri. I told the guy that I'll do the education agri because my classmates were in year three at that point in time. Now, when I did it in school, I wasn't good in English. Now you're asking me to come and be writing about Socrates. I should come and be writing about Aristotle, to come and be writing about Macbeth. It was not going to work. My mom heard about it and my mom disowned me. I was disowned at 19. I lost my father at 13. I had no excuse to fail anywhere. I could not make it anywhere. I went to squat in somebody's house in Onike Wire. My jeans was, was trouser by day. It was pillow by night. I worked there for three months. I come back to school. It affected my degree. I came out of Unica with a third class extra year and NYSC did not post me. How bad can it get? Stop giving me excuses that you are not in Lagos. I don't want to hear that rubbish. You can become whoever you decide to become. You can become. I stayed in a crime house. I squatted in somebody's house in a wet housing. For me to eat food, that person must go to his mother's house. I will follow him. If I miss that lunch trip, I will not eat food. I live not by 111 or 110. Anytime I see food, I eat it. I saw what it meant to be a failure. I was a failure. But I got angry with failure. I got angry. Until you get angry with your present condition, you will not leave it. But when I was disowned, I changed my name to Obon King. I went to hiding for 10 years. I didn't see family. I was ready to survive. I was ready to make it. I have scars on my back. I have pains on my back. But I refused to, to let it disturb me. I had to win by four. I came here to tell you that you will not see shame. Have a fantastic day. My name is Obon King.